Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think my radiator fluid's supposed to be black. I've been fighting overheating issues on this truck basically since the day that I got it running. So of course, when it comes to overheating issues, there's a fair few things that it could be. Most of them are relatively simple and easy to diagnose. So I started with just the absolute basics. I thought I found that the uh, heater hose here was collapsing under load because it wasn't the factory hose. It was intended for this navigator swapped F-150. I swapped that out, of course made no difference. Changed to a slightly cooler thermostat in hopes that that would work, made absolutely no difference. Then what I did was I swapped to the Raptor electric fans, got those wired in. That was a big task in and of itself. Then from there, about the only thing left that wasn't brand new was the radiator. So I thought, well, maybe the radiator is just clogged. I tested it, it seemed fine. So I swapped to a dual core radiator. The other one was a single, so it was about half that thickness. And I've burped the cooling system more times than I can count. I just don't know what it could be. The only thing left would be that when I was building this engine, which of course I did here on the channel, you can go back and watch the full engine build and swap into this truck. There was a lot of corrosion in the cooling passages, probably because whoever owned this motor before me ran straight water in it, not distilled, but you know, hose or tap water. So there was a lot of corrosion, especially inside the block, a little bit on the head and thought that would kind of work its way out with a little bit of cleaner, you know, like the pressed stone yellow bottle, but that didn't work. So after hours of research and pain and misery, I found this stuff, Thermocure Cooling System Rust Remover. I'm hoping that this will do the trick, just basically the last resort because outside of that, I think I'd have to pressure test cooling system and maybe consider possibly a bad head gasket, but that doesn't make sense because the engine runs beautifully. Um, so I don't know. I'm hoping that this works. Basically, this stuff is supposed to turn all the rust inside the engine into this black, evil, disgusting goo <laughs> that will come out of the engine. I need two bottles of this, but first, luckily this engine is just water, just distilled water right now, so I can go ahead and just dump it all out. The instructions say, start with nothing, put this in, then fill with water and drive it around for a while. So that's what we're gonna do. And hopefully this finally, finally, finally means that this tow rig will be on the road. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, look at this. I pulled out the temperature sensor that controls the fan harness and look at the rust that's on my arm. That water is pure distilled mixed with rust. So bummer. All right, this nasty chemical going in. Actually doesn't look as nasty like this as it does when you just look down into the bottle. Fingers crossed, there's no other coolant in here right now, just this so it can live in the bottom of the block, I guess. And then I'll fill it up with just hose water because I'll end up draining this pretty quickly. It says run to three or four hours or a couple days, depending on how jacked up your cooling system is. So we're gonna run it for a couple days, but I can't really drive the truck that long because it overheats. So we'll kind of run it in spades. So we're topped up on coolant, it's not been bled yet, but you can see in there, it is mighty clear. You can't even actually really tell where the fluid line is on camera, but it is clear, I promise. I'm gonna go ahead and let it get up to operating temperature and see if I can bleed it real quick. It runs fine. Oh yeah, we're cooking in there. Either that cleaner is brewing or we got a bad head gasket. So let's hope the cleaner's working. So I've been driving around for a couple days, maybe about a hundred miles. Still no real improvement, but look at that. <laughs> it's black, it's seriously black as night. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. And it smells so terrible, like rotten eggs and poop. Oh, oh, oh God, it's so bad. One week later. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think my radiator fluid's supposed to be black. It's hard to tell, but that is definitely yellowish orange egg sulfur, smell color, everything. It's a very visceral experience in a bad way. So now what I'm gonna try to do is run just straight hose water through it in that in, until it just runs clear into my catch bucket down there. And hopefully by that point, it'll be fixed. This stuff seems to be kind of a pretty amazing cure-all for lots of other vehicles and reviews I've seen online. So hopefully this does the trick for us. Otherwise, uh, I'm burning this truck to the ground. Okay, ran the hose through it a good bit. So now it's coming out clear. I'm gonna pull the bucket out and I'm gonna keep going. And now that I know it's just straight water, clean water, I'm just gonna let it dump onto the ground. And then uh, I'm gonna keep going for quite a while, make sure everything is flushed out, fill it up with regular water and just see what happens. So here is the <laughs> end result. Look at that, that's absolutely insane. There's definitely some oil sheen in there because like I said, the bucket had oil in it. So that's why I wanted to capture it and I'm gonna put it in this jug and re recycle it properly. But I mean, I think some of this stuff is dirt. Some of it is little rust fragments. 
So let's take my magnet here, see if I can collect up any of this stuff. Is any of it magnetic? Oh yeah, look, there is one on there. There's a piece of it right there on the edge. You can see it. So some of that is definitely small rust fragments, which is awesome. That's what I think happened to this engine. Like I said, when I got this block, it seems that it must have sat with regular water in it for a long time and caused a lot of corrosion. So hopefully this does the trick. That is the hole that the little block drain plug comes out of that I pulled and also the switch for the electric fans. And you can see it looks a little dirty in there, but that was pure rust. That was orange color. So it seems that this stuff did the trick. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the plug back in and then that little wire dangling right there controls one of the fans on the two fan setup now. So we'll go ahead and get all this stuff connected. We'll fill it up with some water and go for a test drive. So there's how that looks all put together. You can see that that kind of temperature probe goes into the block and then the wire goes right on the edge of that. And then that runs up to a switch and a bunch of other stuff. So since we know that this whole issue started really because somebody put regular tap water in here, I went ahead and just bought a bunch of jugs of distilled water so that I have everything we need. I think this truck's capacity is something like five or six gallons and I bought eight. So this will be more than enough for now. And if we have to drain again and refill, these are only like a dollar twenty each. So not too bad to do it right with distilled water. And then eventually I'll put real coolant in it. I'm legit now, boys. I even bought one of these no spill bleed yada yada funnel kits big time all right truck is running got the scanner on just started so we're only at 115 but i'm hoping that what should happen is it'll pull the coolant in i have the fan switch that i installed put to the center mode so it will only come on when the thermostat opens and we'll see what we idle at because idling before was at like 199 with the ac on it was idling at like 202 which is obviously too high. It should be basically 195 all the time. Uh, I put my regular OEM thermostat back in the truck, so it should be back to 195, and we'll see how it holds up. It's still pretty high over here on the water level. Oh, look, it's already bubbling up. Good thing we have our funnel here. This is now the highest point in the system because otherwise the heater core is, and it's really high up. It's above the radiator and like above this water bottle. So that's why I bought this thing, because this is very hard to bleed this truck without one of these, or if you have to park it up on ramps or whatever. So, oh, and the ramps are stuck in the BMW, which is great. So I'll let this run for a bit and I'll check back in with you soon. So the way that it's bubbling like this super frequently, this never happened before while it was idling. I had to rev it up, I had to put it on ramps and stuff like I said. So I can already tell it's gonna be way easier to bleed the system. So this little, I don't know, 15, 20 buck uh, coolant kit that I bought is gonna for itself in stride strobes whatever so link is down below if you're interested so we're well past operating temperature and the fan never kicked on uh, i went ahead and just flipped the switch to force it to on so one of them is running right now the other one is off because the ac is switched off and it's like i filled the, the funnel up it's still bubbling but this is worse than we were last time so there must be air in the cooling system still but with how much trouble I'm having with this whole thing, this whole heating and cooling system, like I'm just, I've wondered for a while now, am I getting erroneous readings from one of the sensors? Every sensor is brand new, OEM Motorcraft. So I just don't get it. It's still driving me nuts. Still at 220, I don't get it. This is so frustrating. I tried two different thermostats, swapped every part you can think of. Everything is brand new, OEM. Ugh. I guess I'll stay patient for the moment because it's still bubbling up. So maybe, maybe there'll be some life left in it whenever all the air bleeds out, but I'm not convinced, honestly. It just sucked it all in. Oh, now it's clicking on. Everything's popping off all at once. Shit. Whoa. It sucked it all in so fast. The funnel was full. There was so much air in the system. I could hear it gurgling over the sound of these fans. It was crazy seriously insane but now it finally switched on where are we at i lost the uh i lost the app 212 it's going down it's never gone down Woo i've let it get up to operating temperature now twice and still yellow which is interesting seems like as the coolant's gotten circulated around in the engine some of that cleaner has brought itself back to life um and the overall 
top end temperature has definitely come down from as high as about 233, 235 down to like 222 or so. Uh, but I'm interested to see if once it cools down, I'm gonna take this off and then put the cap back on and drive it around. And then we'll kind of see if once the cooling system is actually holding pressure, if it's any better. It might not, but that's my hope. <laughs> but I mean, if it's overheating when you're just driving around, there's no way it's gonna be able to tow. Oh, that's so annoying. Check this out. I got this bucket emptied into that other container so I can dispose of it. And look at all that. That's all rust fragments from inside that block. And who knows how many of them actually made it inside the container there. They're all over the place. There's a big clump there in the corner. There's tons all the way up the side, all the way down every nook and cranny in this bucket. They are there. That's crazy. So that tells me there's probably a lot more in the engine, which is why we're still seeing that orange coolant. But hopefully once the truck cools down and we try it all again, we'll be good. So with all of that work and still kind of on the verge of a broken truck, I apologize for having been gone all summer. It's been super hot. And really all of my plans for all the other cars are hinging on this truck right here. I didn't expect it to be such a such a challenge to get it running properly, to be honest. It's really close, but it's just close enough that we can't you know, do what I want to do, which is go pick up project cars and tow the BMW to a track and stuff. There's a particular Lexus that I've really wanted to go buy. And really, it's it's not in running condition, which is great. It's awesome for the channel, but I uh, haven't been able to go get that. So thanks all of you for sticking around and for continuing to, you know, watch and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Plenty more good stuff to come in the future once we get this piece of junk sorted. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.